Hello and welcome to this video on how to analyze modification indices in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials related to structural equation modeling, multi level modeling, and latent class analysis and other multivariate techniques. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button in case you like this video. In this video, I want to talk about modification indices in structural equation modeling and specifically in the M plus software. What are modification indices? Modification indices are a diagnostic tool that you can use to determine potential causes or potential sources of uh, misfit in your structural equation model or factor analysis or path analysis. So when you find that the global fit of your model is less than optimal, then you can take a look at those modification indices and they can sometimes give you an idea about what part of the model is not a good fit or which variables are involved in overall misfit. And so I want to show you this here in this presentation, how you can print those modification indices in the M plus software and how you interpret them for a simple confirmatory factor model. In the M plus input file here, you can see that this model is a simple one factor model with four observed variables, y1 through y4. So the idea here is that we fit a unidimensional model, a single factor model to these four variables to find out, for example, are those four variables all congeneric measures of the same factor? Do they all measure the same construct? Now you can see that in the output command, I added two subcommands here, the SAMSTAT command, which is for printing descriptive statistics for the observed variables, and that will be relevant later on for us when we want to take a look at the observed structure, the observed correlations to better understand why we might see some misfit here in this model. And then the second keyword here is the mod indices keyword that allows us to print modification indices in M plus for structural equation models and factor models in general. You can see that um, from the output below that um, the sample size here was 500, so a sizable sample that allows us to um, look at the model fit with sufficient power. And when we scroll down to the model fit information section, you can see first of all the model estimation terminated normally here, so this model was properly fit, there was no improper solution or any kinds of obvious estimation problems, that is a good sign. However, you can see that the chi-square test of model fit, which is given here below the information criteria, is uh, far worse than we would like to see with a value of almost 180, two degrees of freedom. So this value is very, very large relative to the uh, degrees of freedom for this model showing that the model does not fit at all. Or in other words, that there are very substantial discrepancies between the observed covariances and the model implied covariances for this model. You can also see from the root mean square error of approximation, which is a, a, an approximate fit index that this model would not be acceptable. This value is far too large. We would like to see something like a 0.05 or smaller. And then also the uh, relative fit indices CFI and TLI for comparing the model to a baseline model are also not looking good at all. Those should be above 0.95 typically for a decent model. That's what um, typical guidelines would say. And you can see the standardized root mean square residual, which is a um, summary measure of the standardized residuals, the standardized covariance residuals, is also quite high with a value of 0.10. Here we would also like to see values closer to zero, such as ones that are no bigger than 0.05. So overall, it's a very clear picture here that this model does not fit well at all. And so the reason here is actually that the data were generated by a two-factor model. So I used a simulation to generate this data set and the population model that I generated the data from 
with the Monte Carlo simulation was actually a two-factor model where y1 and y2 measure a common factor and y3 and y4 have their own common factor and the factors are correlated but they're not correlated 1.0 so they're not identical or they're not perfectly correlated and so therefore a single factor model is to say an under specification of this model it's too simplistic to assume that all variables measure a single common factor the truth is that they measure two distinct yet correlated factors and so therefore the one factor model doesn't fit now i want to show you how the modification indices can help you detect such an issue because in practice you wouldn't know what the true data generating mechanism is because when you have real data there's no way of knowing whether for example a one factor model generated your data or a two factor model or three factor model and so then you are kind of lost at this point when you look at your global fit statistics and you find that the chi square is large and highly significant and other fit indices also look bad then you would want to know oh, why is that and what can i potentially um, conclude from that and what could I do better in future modeling and so the modification indices can be a helpful diagnostic tool for that when we scroll past the parameter estimates for the model we find those modification indices in the section below and so you can see that the modification indices are listed here under MI so how do you interpret those values that are printed here under the MI column, those can be interpreted approximately like a chi-square change value. So remember that the overall chi-square was something like 178, so almost 180, which is very large for a model that only has two degrees of freedom. And so now you can see that there are some uh, parameters that could be added to the model that would lead to a drop in the chi-square by about 161. So very substantial, a very substantial drop in the chi-square with just a single modification. And there are actually two that are about the same. One modification index is for a covariance between the residual terms associated with y1 and y2. So if you allowed the error terms or residual terms for these two variables to be correlated, then it is expected that your overall chi-square would decline by about 161 points. So you would end up with a chi-square that is much, much lower, a much, much better fit. Now, why is that relevant or why is that? That is because there's a large residual association between y1 and y2 after partialing out a single factor because really the data were generated by a two-factor model. And so a single factor model cannot well explain the overall correlation structure. The same is true for the covariance between y3 and y4. There's also a large residual association here after partialing out the single common factor because a single common factor cannot explain why y4 and y3 are more strongly correlated with one another than they are with y2 and y1. And you can see that by going back to the sample statistics at the top and by looking at the correlation matrix of the observed variables. So this here is the observed or empirical correlation matrix in our data. And you can see here that there's a very strong correlation between y1 and y2 and also between y3 and y4. Those correlations of 0.79 and 0.675 are much stronger than the correlations here in the middle, which are around or range between 0.43-ish and 0.48-ish. And so this is a kind of an inhomogeneous pattern that is very clearly in line with a two-factor model, where Y1 and Y2 have more in common with one another and Y3 and Y4 have more in common with one another. You can see they're still correlated across as well, but not so strongly. So this speaks for a two-factor model with correlated factors. It's a very, very 
obvious structure. A single, for a single factor model, we would assume that the correlations between all four variables are about the same size, meaning you would have to find the six correlations here to be about the same. If they were all 0.5-ish, for example, or 0.4-ish or 0.6-ish, then a single factor model would probably be a good fit here, but not given the, this inhomogeneous pattern. And so what the mod indifi modification indices tell you here is that there's a residual association here and a residual association here after we take into account one common factor. The one single common factor does not explain it all. And so the way that you can fix this problem, so to say, in terms of the modification indices is allowing an error covariance either between y1 and y2 or between y3 and y4. So that would kind of fix the problem, so to say, statistically, because then this residual association or this inhomogeneous pattern would be taken into account. Now, obviously, this is not the right thing to do, right? Because really here, the right thing to do would be to specify two factors and allowing the correlation between or covariance between those two factors and not um, messing with error correlations. And that shows you one problematic issue with the modification indices, because the modification indices are purely statistically driven. They are dumb, so to say, with regard to the causal structure that underlies your model. It simply tells you what is a quick fix to get this under control. And so what you shouldn't do, in my opinion, is then just simply blindly follow the modification indices and saying, oh yeah, I'm going to just pop in this error covariance into my model and that fixes the problem because the problem may be deeper. The whole structure of the model may have to be revised. The whole issue might have to be thought through more carefully. And so the modification indices then could lead you in the wrong direction. So what I like to do is I like to just simply use those modification indices as a diagnostic tool in the same way as I use model residuals. And I have a separate video that you can find in the description on covariance residuals, where you can look at the residual covariance matrix and standardized residuals. And they also tell you, so say where something is wrong with your model so you can de develop your hypotheses about how the model might have to be revised. So purely looking at this from a diagnostic standpoint when you are lost and you don't know why your model doesn't fit, take a look at the modification indices and or the residuals and that might give you some ideas. But don't, so say, blindly implement those. What is useful to do is to look at the largest one, in my opinion or in my experience. So you go through that list and you take a look at what is the largest one and then you think about it. Like what could this mean that there's such a large residual association? Now sometimes modification indices can be printed for other parameters other than error or residual associations. For example, the modification indices might suggest a missing loading, a cross loading when you have multiple factors or other parameters as well. So that is also something to take into account. Again, when you use these, be careful. Do not simply blindly implement those suggested modifications because they may not be substantively meaningful. They're purely statistically driven based on these data. It might in part be capitalization on chance. You should always cross-validate model modifications that were done um, after the fact with fresh data, with a new data set, to make sure that those are not purely chance driven. I hope you found this video useful for your own work. Please check out the description for additional free resources, mini workshops on path analysis and mediation and sample size planning. And also you can find links to other workshops in the description. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button and I'll see you next week.